Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, with episode number 351 of Ask Dave. Today, we've got a quick video covering progress on the kit building of the QCX Mini from qrp-labs.com. This is the instruction manual, which I printed out double-sided uh, in color and then took down and had bound at uh, Office Depot. I have had an Augie write and say that to have Office Depot print this uh, document in color, double-sided, like I've done here, would cost, uh, I think he quoted $85. And I, I went, I, it took my breath away because uh, that's, <laughs> that's about what the kit cost. Um, you can, I guess if you have a laptop computer, uh, go through it. I would recommend that whatever mechanism you use, you do it in color. You see the red on those pages there? This red right here outlines the part that's being talked about. The gray are the things that are already in there, and the ones that are still white and not grayed in are parts that have yet to be installed. Now, if you print this in black and white, that red will look very much like the gray and will be a little hard to figure out. But, uh, wow, uh, I had no idea it was that expensive. We have a color laser printer here, and... Uh, I do know that it's expensive to run. It costs a fortune for the toner cartridges. Uh, but, oh well, you know, I really like it this way, uh, doing it this way. Um, I wanted to show you just a couple things about the kit building. This is the series that's going to take us through to finishing the QCX Mini. But at uh, the request of some Augies, I'm trying to include... Uh, additional kit building tips as we go and this is my uh, workstation here I've got uh, uh, a, a little voltmeter here balding meter where I can make sure that uh, connections are sure there's my solder my little uh, uh, circuit board holder with the circuit board itself in it you can see just how small that is right there and then the tray full of components now I wanted to show you the light I use uh, this is what I look through. This is a lighted magnifying glass. This is a three times magnifier here. It's big enough that you can use both eyes to look through it. And it has about a 25 watt fluorescent in there. This very lamp is still available from home. Uh, let's see, this would be Office Depot. Office Depot, they're a little pricey. Uh, there are other magnifier lamps available, and you may want one that just is a desk lamp. This one clamps to the side of the desk. Um, you may want one that uh, just sits on the desk, but you definitely want a magnifier, and you want to be able to look at it with both eyes when you look through it. Now, I actually use an additional magnifier, uh, just a simple little, um, you know, office supply store magnifier and right here this part right here gives you additional magnification so you can take the magnification from this lamp and add it to the magnification from this lamp and then look through this little part here and you can get right down almost a microscopic type view on the tiny little components that we're dealing with this is how I have my general uh, station set up over here on my workbench um, I have a light up here at the top. It's a very bright LED light. And then I have the task light right here. And you can see the little circuit board uh, right here. And that way I have ample, ample lighting. This light up here is this from Home Depot. It's a 4 foot 20 watt. Now that's the actual power used. It's not like a 20 uh, watt incandescent. In fact, it's 1,800 lumens, so it's um, a little closer to like a 175-watt bulb. Uh, 4,000K seems to be what indoor LEDs are migrating toward. Um, I prefer the warmer 
uh, for uh, study and for lighting the house and so on. Uh, 4000K is not daylight. Daylight is 5000 to 5500K. Uh, but this uh, so-called bright white uh, is a very popular color temperature uh, for it. These are quite inexpensive and you can see how mine is hanging up right here. Uh, the ceiling in this room is wood and so I've put little eye hooks up there and then the chains that came with the lamp you can see a little bit right there um, hold it down a little bit so it doesn't waste its light on these upper shelves and uh, is down where I need the light. This is the circuit board itself. Now what we did today was put this socket in. This is an IC socket. He asks that you push it as far in this direction as you can. Now the way that you do that is you put the thing in and you solder one pin. Then you turn this thing over. This is called a rotisserie. It, it does actually turn over. You solder the one pin, and then while holding the socket up against the circuit board and as much toward the top as you can, you reheat that pin so that it can move in that direction and be flat on the board. And then you come down here and solder this pin, and then you repeat that by heating this one to make sure the whole thing is exactly lined up flat on the board and it wants it pushed as far this way as possible because you got the the uh, jack here for the paddle and you've got the where the crystal goes down here and so on there really isn't much room on the circuit board these things that look like ICs are in fact ICs but they are surface mount ICs and so uh, they come already attached to the board. So the first thing I did was put T1, that's this thing right here, which you want to be extremely careful with and test out for continuity. And then I put in these little capacitors right here this afternoon. All these little capacitors, note these are blue, and this one right here. I put this crystal in and uh, actually started the whole fair with this uh, socket right here. So that's uh, there's a lot more to go on this board. The next thing that goes in is the little temperature controlled crystal oscillator that goes right here. The nice thing about this board holder is it is like a rotisserie. You can rotate the board around the other way to look at the back. You know, you put the components through and then while holding the component in, you roll it over and spread the pins apart so it'll hold in place and then you can solder them uh, in there. This little uh, circuit board holder is available on Amazon. Um, it's not very expensive at all. Uh, the way you use it is you put the board in here, then you uh, loosen this screw right here, push this all the way here to where that screw is holding or where that uh, spring is holding the board in place and then you tighten this little screw down here and it'll hold it in place. It's an absolutely fabulous little invention. Here you see uh, all the components laid out. Um, there aren't, uh, these are three capacitors that haven't been installed yet. Uh, they may be surplus. I've got the transistors down here and the potentiometers and push buttons up here. I've got a electrolytic capacitor and so on and so forth all uh, going through here. And it works really well to keep things in this tray. So you can see them, you can get to them easily, but they don't tend to migrate by themselves. Of course, you don't want to throw stuff on top of the tray. My solder station is back over here. Um, that 393, by the way, is centigrade. Um, that's the temperature I've kind of used. It makes for a kind of a hot iron and, and uh, it solders very, very quickly. That soldering station is still available on Amazon and it's less than $100. Uh, you want to look for a solder station. 
you're going to do a lot of kit building rather than a solder pencil or something like that. Now this one happens to be a rework station. The rework station is for uh, working with surface mount devices. To remove a surface mount device, you don't use the soldering iron, but rather you use the hot air gun. And you use one of these little attachments here to uh, direct just the amount of air that you need. The air is hot enough to melt the solder, and then with a piece of twi uh, with a pair of tweezers, you can lift the surface mount device right off the board. We see the board right here. These are actually surface mounted. They're not through hole components. Uh, there are different pitches for surface mount components. You see here one right here, which happens to be the master oscillator, um, is a very, very small pitch. These are bigger pitch right here. These are op amps. Uh, this is a voltage regulator down here. And then there are a lot of little tiny things in here, like a little tiny capacitor and a little tiny resistor. And these, you really need a microscope, literally a microscope, to uh, look through in order to put these together. So that ends our uh, tour for uh, what we've done today and given you a few hints about some things you might want to get in order to do um, kit building. This kit that I'm doing is not a kit for a first-time builder. If you are a first-time builder, you might want to start out with the QCX+. Plus. A QRP CW transceiver is very often a first kit or a second kit uh, that you might want to uh, put together. And we can talk about different parts as we go. If you would, please subscribe um, and then click the bell so you can be notified, depending on how you have your notification settings uh, set for Google. They no longer send out email notifications. I don't know why, but they said that uh, uh, nobody's using them. Well, nobody over 30 probably, but I'm a little bit over 30. Uh, please also check out dcastler.com slash support dcastler.com d-c-a-s-l-e-r.com slash support and you'll come up with this web page right here which shows you different ways that you can help support the channel uh, financially so until we next meet 73